The captain told the crew the bad news. They've known for months now, but until today, it's been on a need-to-know basis. Now it's out there. We can't stop the ship. I remember telling the captain about the fault, a manufacturing issue that no one else had detected. I felt responsible. After all, I'm the ship's engineer. Like my father and his father before him. All he said was, we'll fix it. Now months on, we're nearing our destination and no closer to finding a solution. But in lieu of a fix, I believe I have an alternative. After all the debates, all the meetings and the arguing, the ship's council has finally approved the plan. So where all systems go, we're rigging the emergency pods and the life ships to carry as much useful equipment as possible. The command crew have made all the course adjustments they can to get the ship close to the target. After that, we'll launch all the pods as the ship passes by. With any luck, they will all land safely and we can finally call this mission a success. There's just one catch. Someone has to stay behind to launch the pods. That person will be stuck on board. One life for many seems like a good deal. Gene will think I'm crazy, but I volunteered to be that person. Funny, Gene's always telling me I need to step up to the challenge more to prove I have what it takes. I'm not sure this is what she had in mind. After weeks of preparation and drills, we're finally getting close. Only a few more days to launch. All adjustments have been made and our trajectory is looking good. I've been getting the engineers to double and triple check everything. I want this to go as smoothly as possible. We've had our teething problems, which I guess were to be expected. After all, this ship wasn't meant to do this without stopping. I'm getting nervous. If this fails. There's another thing. Jean's pregnant. She doesn't know that I know. I found the test in the bathroom. With all that's happening, I guess she doesn't know how to tell me. Maybe she's afraid that it'll affect my judgment. She might have been right about that. I was gonna tell her tonight that I'm the one, but I'm not sure if I can anymore. She'll wanna stop me or worse, she'll wanna stay behind as well. I can't let that happen. Pod 12, launch, launch, launch. Pod 13, begin launch procedures. Pod 14, what are you doing? Pod 14, please acknowledge. Come in, do you read me? Abort, I repeat, abort. You were not cleared to... Oh, no. Exclusion of Bay 14, emergency. I repeat, this is an emergency. All remaining pods, begin launch. Tom, where are you? The, the pilot, he, he, he's saying he's going to leave without you. What's happening? Gene, we've got to go now. This is Chief Engineer Tom Edwards to the pilot of Life Ship 003. This is a direct order. Secure all passengers and launch now. Tom, the ship's leaving. Where are you? Gene, sweetheart, you have to listen to me. I'm sorry. It's the only way. I couldn't tell you before. Someone needs to stay on board and make sure everyone gets out of here. I, I don't... Why? Why you? It's my responsibility. Listen to me. You're gonna be okay. Both of you. How? How did you know... It's not important. Just know everything is going to be okay. I love you. We're out of 
have communication range now. I've been sitting here for hours, listening to the crackle of the dead signal. I thought I was ready for this. I thought I had made peace with it. But knowing that that was the last time I was going to hear her voice makes it so much worse. The captain said they're going to name the first settlement after me. Nice gesture, I guess. But I really didn't do it for them. I did it for her. And the life she's carrying. This is the right thing to do. There's no telling when or if this ship will ever stop. We had our shot, and we took it. I'd gladly do it again. My kid's not gonna grow up in some tin can, floating aimlessly in space. They're gonna grow up with dirt between their toes and a sky above their head. Thank <laughs> you.